This is Sung Jin Woo's son, Sung Su Ho story part two. For part three, 1,000 likes and everyone hit that subscribe button. The school day was finally over. While everyone was hurriedly trying to escape from this institution of learning, only Su Ho remained standing by the window to look at its athletics field outside. Other students were filing out of the school's front gate. He didn't like the melee of confusion like that. His mom always laughed and said that he was exactly like his father in that regard. He read the book he borrowed from the library before raising his head back up, thinking that maybe he should start heading back home now. There was no one else besides him in the classroom. Suho leisurely packed his bag and slung it over his shoulder. It was fine to be relaxed and laid back, but if he were to waste any more time than this, he'd definitely arrive home late for dinner. And that would mean he'd have to face the wrath of his mother. It'd be a relief if the story ended there. If the news of his mom getting angry reached his father's ears? Ugh, damn it. I imagine what would happen to me. Suho was overcome with a nasty case of goosebumps and hurriedly shook his head. Just how old would his father have to be before he wasn't so scary anymore? Seriously now, he got this sneaking suspicion that even if his father ended up becoming an old man, Suho would still never win against him. He shuddered once more and quickly headed to the rear door of the classroom. But when he tried to open it, the door doesn't want to open. If it was locked, then there was no way this thing wouldn't budge like this since it was none other than himself tugging at it, the door showed no signs of moving, as if it was a wall to begin with. What's going on? Suho's eyes grew rounder at this time. He ran to the front door and grabbed its handle, but it was the same story here too. Now thoroughly shocked, he quickly ran to the window and took a look outside. That was when a truly unbelievable spectacle manifested itself before his eyes. Every single student leaving through the school gate, students exercising on the field, cars passing on the road, pedestrians walking on the pavement, and even the kick ball flying in the air. Everything had come to a dead stop. But how can something like this be? Suho clenched both of his fists real tight and slammed it at the window with all his might. Boom! Too bad the window not only didn't shatter from the impact, but his fist also bounced away from it as if it was hitting the rubber wall. It happened then. Suho retreated from the windows, and while taking hurried steps backward, he tried very hard to figure out what was going on in his head. And that's when it appeared. Suho's head snapped towards the black circular hole that appeared out of nowhere nowhere at the back of the classroom. It was no bigger than the size of a volleyball, but it rapidly grew larger and larger until it was big enough for a single person to walk through. It was basically a doorway of darkness, so dark that it felt like he was being sucked in. Regular kids might have been scared out of their wits by this development, but rather than crying out or screaming, Suho placed his hand on his chest instead. Ba thumb, ba thumb, ba thumb. His agitated heart was pounding away in exhilaration. Maybe, just maybe it was possible that he was waiting for something like this for a long, long time. Mom said that I resemble my dad all the time, doesn't she? If it was his father, then what would he have done? The answer was pretty obvious though. Ba thumb, ba thumb, ba thumb. Because his pounding heart was already making his legs move, Suho stood before the gate and touched its surface. <laughs> Although there was some sparks of electricity, he didn't feel any pain. No, he felt so much better instead, as if he was returning to his hometown that he had to leave behind a long time ago. There was this strange, vague sense of deja vu, as if he had already entered a place like this once before. Suho slowly but carefully regulated his breathing. His wildly beating heart finally regained some calmness, and inside of his head seemed to clear up. Good. A brief flash of a grin formed on his face, and then he jumped inside of the gate without a moment of hesitation. So we see right there, it seems like Jin Woo concocted something to make a gate form in order for his son to experience what a gate is. Maybe he's trying to teach him how to control his powers or to see if he's ready for his powers to come back to him. But one thing that ain't never changed, Suho is just like his father. Jin Woo. Suho walked through the tunnel like darkness and after emerging from it, took a look around himself. He was now in a passageway of an ancient looking structure. The only source of light illuminating this place was a lit torch on the walls. What is this place? Because of the low lighting conditions, his eyes narrowed to a slit so that he could get a better look at the vicinity. The way back, was blocked off. Suho felt around the solid wall blocking his rear and shook his head eventually. He couldn't sense any sort of empty spaces behind this wall, so there is no other way besides four. The flames of the torch wavered around. He took it off of the wall and it illuminated in front of him. When he did, wow, he was greeted by the sight of weapons arranged neatly on the display of either side of the passageway. 
a long sword, a short sword, a bow, a spear, a mace, etc. A truly vast array of weapons were endlessly stacked against the walls in this steel darkness, as if to wait for their rightful owner to come and pick them up. Suho dazedly looked at them before swallowing back his saliva. What could possibly be the reason for the weapons to be? Well, it was rather obvious, wasn't it? I need to choose. His gaze became far more circumspect than ever before. He didn't know why he was transferred to this place, but if his guess was right and the exit was at the end of the passage, then the weapon he chose right now would serve as a trustworthy companion on his journey. But something felt weird. Why did it feel like his senses were being enhanced? His heart that didn't beat too fast while hanging out with his friends or checking out a game they suggested he should play was now pounding away like crazy. As he observed each weapon on display, Suho's eyes shone from the light of excitement. All right, he looked a close look at all the weapons lined up right to the end and then turned to the beginning to study them for a bit more. A few interesting hopefuls caught his eye, but in the end, there was nothing better than it or so he decided. After putting the torch back up on the wall behind him, he cautiously put them on both of his hands. Clank, clank. There were a pair of steel gauntlets that fit him snugly, as if they had been crafted with him in mind. Unlike other weapons that required some amount of familiarity in order to effectively use them, his two fists were without a doubt the most familiar and most powerful weapons he possessed. This is it. As if he found the gauntlets greatly to his life, he began folding his outstretched fingers one by one, again and again. When he was done fooling around, rumble, torches lined up on the wall in front of him and all around him lit up all at once. A long, long passageway now greeted a corridor resembling a secret pathway of an ancient castle seemed to stretch on forever and ever towards the other end something was about to begin suho did his best to calm his wildly pounding heart before his eyes spotted a pair of short swords resting next to where he found his gauntlet but his gaze lingered on only for a brief moment who'd use weapons that look so weak for some reason, that pair of short swords looked saddened somehow as Suho's caution stepped left them behind in the darkness. Suho carefully tread through the corridor. Is anyone here? He raised his voice and called out, but there was no reply whatsoever. No, he couldn't even sense any presence of living people at all. And so, just how long did he walk like this? It wouldn't be too surprising to get worn out by being continuously vigilant like this, but Suho still kept his senses ultra sharp and didn't let up his worried observation of the surroundings. He could see the lit torches and the sparks of flames dancing on top of them, hanging on the walls. He could also see the old-fashioned architecture of this place, as well as the metallic suits of armor lining up the sides of the walls with the nary gap between them. Am I in some kind of basement of a medieval castle or something? His curiosity on where he was and why he was summoned here grew greater and greater the longer he advanced forward. But then, hold up, Suho felt this ominous chill creep down his spine, and he quickly went back the way he came to stand before a certain suit of armor. For some reason, the position of this armor seemed a wee bit different from when he walked past it a few seconds ago. This? Wait, did it really have its sword raised up in the air like this before? He was pretty sure that this weapon was pointing down to the ground last time. Suho tilted his head and took a step forward, only for the sword of the armor to slice down in a straight line. Clang! If he hadn't raised the gauntlet, and urgently blocked the blade in the nick of time, his head might have been split in half just now. What the hell? The suit of armor didn't even give Suho any chance to feel stunned by the development. It dropped his sword and pounced forward to strangle him with his bare hands. Boom! Bang! Quang! His gauntlet soon issued several urgent, thunderous booms. And not too long afterwards, the suit of armor with its helmet destroyed stopped moving altogether. <sighs> While pushing away the collapsed suit of armor with his foot, Suho breathed roughly and quickly. Thankfully, he didn't suffer any damage from this encounter, but his heart was pounding away so hard that it felt as if it'd explode at any time. Hold up, what if this wasn't the only suit of armor that could move? And what if every single one of them wanted to harm him? All those inanimate armors he walked past earlier without thinking too much brushed past his mind. That wasn't the end of his troubles though. There was already so many of them in front of him, and there was even lining up along the length of the corridor too. And sure enough, clank, click, accompanied by the chorus of metallic joints creaking and groaning, the suits of armor began descending from the platforms one by one. 
The various weapons held in their hands seemed to glow in a chilling gray under the light. Ah, maybe I should have selected that mace. Su Ho swallowed back his small waves of regret rushing in and clenched his fist tight. It was around that time that the suits of armor rushed in his position. Boom! When he brought back down the very last suit of armor, he got to hear the announcement again. Level up! Current level, 19. Fuck. Suho bent down and exhaled a large gulping of air before raising his body up again. Every time he heard that message, all of his fatigue seemed to get washed away in full. That wasn't the only change though. After regaining control over his breathing, he threw a straight jab into the empty air. His fist flew out like a bullet. Not only that, his entire body was overflowing with unexplainable power. I get it now. It was simpler than that, he thought. If he defeated these living suits of armor, then his level would go up, and the higher his level got, the stronger he'd get too. And quite obviously, he'd be able to bring these monsters down much more easily as a result. Simple, yet a powerful, peculiar cycle indeed. Suho looked behind at the corridor he'd been walking until now. Large piles of armors broken beyond repair or recognition were strewn about here and there. He licked his lips a bit. This sucks. It'd been so much nicer if he could raise his level just a bit higher here. He wanted to get stronger just a bit more. Unfortunately, every road had an end. Suho looked at that giant doorway now blocking his path. His senses had matured greatly as his level rose up and they helped him to detect the presence of a powerful figure behind the door. That was why he felt rueful about leveling up even more. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath just like how his father had taught him and reached out towards the door to push it open with both hands. The heavy looking door opened up. The sight of a huge room resembling a castle's audience chamber greeted him next. As he followed along the rows of pillars set at a close interval on either side of him, he soon arrived at the deepest part of this chamber where a tall thorn stood proudly above a raised cliff. Suho was frozen stiff with nervousness in an instant because there was another monster suit of armor sitting on the throne. But he felt his strength on another dimension altogether from this bastard compared to the other monsters he encountered so far. That's it. The existence that emitted a goosebumps inducing aura he felt outside the door. It was precisely this guy. The monster slowly got up and took one step at a time to descend the stairs below the throne. It was a black knight. The knight boasting a strand of red plumage attached to its helm finally made its way down to the ground. Just the faint aura emitted from the creature made his skin tingle and shiver from nervousness. However, Suho began smiling for some reason, an electrifying sensation thrilling enough to make all of his hair on his body stand up and wrapped around his entire being. The knight began unsheathing his sword. I'll attack first before that sword is fully drawn out. But just before he got ready to dash forward, the Black Knight was already standing right before his nose. A brilliant flash of light shone from the sword, swung by the creature just then. Uh, that bright blinding light filled up his view. Suho hurriedly raised his body up. Still incredibly tense, he scanned his surroundings, but he failed to see the Black Knight anywhere. No, he wasn't even in the same chamber where the monster was. Somehow he was teleported back to the starting point. What the heck was that? He lost all strength on his legs and plopped down to the ground. I thought I was really going to die. He felt deeply spooked when recalling the moments of the Black Knight unsheathing his sword. He really, really thought that was the end for him. Besides all that, do I need to cross the corridor again? Feeling quite unhappy now, Suho got up from his spot only to realize that something had changed from the first attempt. Now would be lit torches on the starting point. Rumble! Out of those, there was three with blue flames burning. But now he realized that one of them had gone out. Could that be a coincidence? No, it wasn't. Weapons by the starting point? His level that rose up after killing monsters? His body that grew stronger as his levels rose up? Not one of them could be called a coincidence. Suho had a moment of empathy just then. It's not that I was going to die, but there was no such concept as either pain or death inside this strange place. But those blue flames substituted for his remaining opportunities. If all three flames went out then, for now, 
it was hard for him to imagine what kind of result waited for him. In that case, I gotta be more malicious. The glare in Suho's eyes grew even more vigilant compared to the first attempt. One more time, but he'd not mess up this chance this time around. Boom! He made up his mind as he blew away the monster's suit of armor, busy pouncing on Finding himself forcibly returned to the starting point once again, Suho rolled around on the ground while clutching his head. Of course, he wasn't doing that because of his injury or crippling physical pain, he was just pissed off by the fact that he ended up throwing away yet another chance. He pounded on the ground as tears formed on his eyes. That's how deeply he felt hurt right now. After he somehow calmed the raging firestorm in his heart, he raised his head a bit to look, and to no one's surprise, the number of lit blue torches had decreased by one. Now, there was only one remaining. That Black Knight. He's just too powerful. There simply was far too great of a gap between him and that creature, and it was more than enough to call it a cheat. That, that balance of this trial was definitely broken. With things like this, he'd never be able to defeat that bastard. Suho rolled around on the ground once more. He did that for a while. Eventually, he grew tired of doing that, so he stopped and leaned his back against the wall before shifting his gaze over to the corridor. It was unknown just from where those suits were being summoned, but well, they had returned again and were manning their stations once more. Aren't you guys sick and tired of this already? Suho even felt happy to see those monster armors after seeing them for the third time like this. Ha ha ha, he spat out a lengthy groan one after another, but then, uh? A light bulb went off in his head. He raised his head and looked at the armors once more. When did those things reappear again? Initially, he figured that the monsters reappeared simply because he was sent back to the starting point. However, what if that was wrong and they regenerated after a certain period of time? Ba-thump, 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 ba-thump. A new ray of hope seemed to be within his reach. Okay, let's try it out. Suho beat up the monster armors near the entrance and destroyed them before returning to the starting point. He sat down with the back leaning against the wall and observed for any potential changes to the monsters. After some time had passed by, plop, plop, the dead monster armor suddenly turned into sand and one by one got absorbed into the ground. And then Suho's eyes grew wider after he saw what happened next. The sand suddenly gathered above the platforms the monsters used to stand and transform back into the suits of armor. Yes! Suho clenched his fist real tightly. Finally! He found the right answer. The only existence that could aid him with his leveling up thankfully respond after a fixed period of time. Didn't that mean he should crazily level up by smashing these monsters apart until he could actually follow the movements of that horrifying black knight? A grin floated up on Suho's face as he stood back up. Funnily enough, the monster armors flinched over so slightly after they saw the figurative sparks of flames burning within his eyes. Level 70. No matter how many times he hunted these monsters down, his level didn't want to raise beyond that. However, this should be more than enough. Blackish aura was slowly rising up Suho's shoulders. He didn't know what these strands of black smoke might be, but he could tell one thing for sure, and that would be the fact that his body was currently overflowing with this incredible energy he found hard to fully control yet. He unhesitatingly pushed open the door to the chamber where the Black Knight was waiting for. Unlike the first two fights, the monster kindly came to greet him at the door's vicinity. Suho grinned deeply. Were you waiting for long? Rather than a verbal answer, the Black Knight unsheathed his sword instead. For some reason, it felt as if this knight was smiling. Feeling confident after managing to push his level all the way up to level 70 somehow, Suho unleashed all of the magical energy gathered within his body without holding back. The ground trembled and pieces of rubble began floating in the air. Now it's my turn. 